Thanks, George. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yeah, yeah bad luck. Um, <laughs> I just, before I even start boring you to tears, I want to say a massive thank you to Carlo, because that was a really moving speech, especially to people of my generation. I am your token old person, by the way. My grandfather died on the Somme in 1916, and my father was driven nuts in the Second World War in the Air Force, so we would have freedom of speech and we would not be told what to do by Europeans. What a bloody waste of effort, eh? It's very symbolic that we are here in this building today because just next door in the cathedral is buried the remains of the person who gave every foundation for freedoms that this country stands for. King John, albeit somewhat reluctantly, was forced to sign Magna Carta. Okay, so bear that in mind when you wander around Worcester. We in UKIP I mean, I'm your small business spokesman. I will come on to that because I know an awful lot of you people will go on to work in small businesses. It's the backbone of British economy. But we were, never forget, we were the people's army that won the battle. We now have to morph into the people's party that wins the peace. We are going to be sold down the river. Okay? I'm very lucky in being the warm-up act for Gerard. Yeah, luck. Lucky me, eh? And I'm sure he will touch on it because he has a lot more information on exactly what they are going to try and do to us. He said two years ago, three years ago, if we got a referendum, he reckoned we'd win. Well, he's bound to say that, isn't he? And he then said the establishment would kick into overdrive to prevent it. And boy, are they. Um, I have to compliment YI. I've, all, I've spoken at three YI conferences now, and I just think you're amazing. You do a hell of a tough, tough job. I've done several freshers' fairs, and I've spoken in front of 4,000 students at Bath University in 2010. Did learn some new words. That was funny. Um, I've spoken, and I've noticed there is a change in our youth. They are no longer the brainwashed people that these 140 EU-funded Monet professors who circulate around our university spreading the word. They're no longer beholden to them. I spoke at a school in Stroud, uh, which is, for those of you who don't know it, it's like Brighton in the Cotswolds. It's, it's like left-wing pinko green heaven. And they kicked UKIP off stage two years ago. N not me. And I went there with some trepidation, and the question came up about youth voting giving people 16, 17 the vote. Labour, Lib Dems, um, Greens all stood up and said, oh, this is a marvellous idea. Give, give five-year-olds the vote. Give embryos the vote. <laughs> Absolutely marvellous. And they got a rousing round of applause for this. Then the Tories stood up and he said, well, it's against our policy, and just got booed. And I thought, what am I going to say to these guys? And I stood up and I said, look, I've got an 18-year-old daughter doing three A-levels. As someone who had no formal education, I got one O level. I can't believe the workload she has. We've got youth mental health at an astonishing level in this country, and all the establishment do is weep crocodile tears and wring their hands. And this lot would lump the single biggest decision of your life on you, and at this moment in time, it's that four-letter F word. I don't think it's fair. And I got a round of applause for that. We do have a message, we can communicate, and the younger people, the 16, 17, 18 year olds, are changing. Your stall that you had at the national conference, um, I, I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I bought one of those contraceptives. You, do you remember them? Ne <laughs> Never waste an election, yeah? <laughs> Thank God I haven't got a speech impediment. And, <laughs> I bought it because apparently an election comes around every five years, and at my age, I thought, I might get some use out of this, you know. <laughs> there was, however, another wonderful stand, the Northern Ireland stand, and I ask you to think of them who are being held as an absolute pawn to ransom. And they had, I've got this 18-year-old daughter, she's gone to Nottingham Trent University to do fashion, okay? 
And poor old Em's had to live with me for God knows how many years, so she's a teensy bit right of centre. Teensy bit. And I looked at her, and she's very attractive, and I thought, what, how am I going to cope with this? You know, university with all these guys chasing after her. I thought, the ultimate contraceptive. I got her one of those UKIP thongs. Did you see them? <laughs> <laughs> We need you. I mean, I do social media, I do Twitter with a phone that big and fingers that large. I mean, it's hilarious. Um, my only claim to fame on Twitter is Lord Adonis has blocked me. Ah, <laughs> deep joy. <laughs> and I'll let you into a secret as long as you don't tell anybody. He blocked me because I found out that his mythological forebear, from whom he takes his name, was actually... Uh, the uh, creation of a father and a daughter. And I thought, well, this must account for some of his very odd views. <laughs> so don't tell anyone. Small business, small business. Small business is not small business. It is big business. It employs over half of the working population in the UK. And that includes all of your government stuff, the council, the district council, local council, county council, council of councillors, counselling councillors. Everything. The NHS. The army. Well, we don't actually have an army, technically. It's a corps. Or a corpse. It's fallen below 100,000 standing strength. That's what the Tories have done for us. Small business, there's six million of us. Now, I know this figure is totally correct and it is not open to challenge because Mrs May told me. 100,000 businesses do direct business with the EU. 100,000 out of 6 million, okay? And in fact, I'm one of them. Because th 30 years ago, I was in a squat in London, started this little company, and despite me, we do okay. Um, although I am banned from working in my own company, because apparently I'm tricky. <laughs> we are, some of the older people will remember a company called Olivetti, okay? And we are their largest European distributor for some of their products. And I phoned the Italians up and I said, hey, look, you know, this Brexit thing, really sorry about it and all that. Hey, it's a no problem. We're friends. It's no problem. Friends will sort things out. And that is their attitude, the Italians. The Italians, by the way, who I believe have taken Asia Bibi. I believe they have granted her asylum, which we as a country were too coward to do. And that disgusts me. I did write the speech, by the way, I promise. I was supposed to go shopping down in Bath. My wife said, I've got a day organised shopping in Bath. I said, oh, I've got such bad news for you, darling. So my heartfelt thanks to George Pycroft, to Nate, and to YI for rescuing me. I'll get off now and let the main man come and talk to you. Thank you ever so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.